Hey everybody, Mike here. You know, if it's one thing I love about what I do, it's driving to work in the morning. I see some real, really cool sunrises. We have to get up at the at the crack of dawn every single morning to go pour concrete, and sometimes, you know, depending on where we're going and the angle, the roads we're on, the sunrises are absolutely magnificent. Now this morning what we're doing is we're pouring a concrete floor at a farm. These guys have orga organic vegetables. They make, uh, they grow sweet potatoes. So they needed this floor in here. And this floor pitches four inches from the, the left here to the right. There's, there's a set of uh, drains on the other side of that concrete wall where they cut through the wall. So they needed this floor to slope and shed water so when they when they wash vegetables and stuff in here, it all goes to those drains. But they, you know, these guys do a little bit of concrete themselves. They just didn't really feel that comfortable about doing a floor this size with that much slope on it. They, they wanted to make sure they got it right. So they hired us just for labor to come in here and pour and finish the concrete. So that's what we're doing. They actually got it all ready for us. They, they did the gravel work, they did the styrofoam, they put the wire down. Um, so they did a pretty good job with all that. They put the ISO strip up there on the left on that wall over there. And we came in and shot grade. So we made sure, that, you know, we shot grade with our laser. We made sure the slopes were all good. And it's, it's about a 48 foot long by 24 foot wide floor. That's why we're using the conveyor here. That conveyor on that truck will reach about 40 feet. So rather than, you know, get a pump truck or wheelbarrow or something like that we decided just to get the conveyor truck and shoot it right in there with a the conveyor and that's Darren running the little hopper and Luke and I are getting the concrete spread out we decided to lift the wire as we went the, home, the owner there that's one of the owners right there he wanted to put the styrofoam blocks underneath the wire to hold it up <clears throat> honestly we're not real crazy about putting these little pieces of styrofoam in the floor. <laughs> Sometimes if they come loose and you don't know it, they'll they'll kind of rise up to the surface as you're finishing, as you're power troweling. And next thing you know, you know, just when you're getting finishing done power troweling, the floor is almost rock hard. That piece of styrofoam pops out and you got a big hole in the floor. So we decided we'd just pull it up, get the aggregate and the stone from the concrete underneath the wire. And once you do that, the wire doesn't go all the way back down to the bottom. Plus, we got fiber mesh in it, too. We got 3,500 PSI with fiber mesh. The water's really hot. It's about 110 degrees this morning. So the concrete should dry pretty good for us. I'm going to show you the whole process here. I'm going to show you that three guys that know what they're doing can, can pour a floor like this pretty easily. It's, it's just under 1,200 square feet. It's going to be a couple loads. It's right around that 16, 17 yards of concrete. But all in all, you know, from start to finish, this this probably took us about 45 minutes to get it all poured, screeded, both loaded. The conveyor truck, you know, it, even though it does reach really good, it does make your job a lot easier. It's actually a little bit, probably a little bit slower than just pouring right out of the chute. I mean. The conveyor only goes at, a, at one speed, basically. So, it's only gonna come out of that hopper so so quick. And we're kinda waiting around for it a little bit to get it enough in place so we can rake it. But for us, you know, for today, it's plenty fast enough for what we need it to do. He can, he can retract that thing about 10 feet too, so he can go from 40 feet to 30 feet without having to pull ahead. And then once he gets, once he gets, pulls that thing as as far ahead as he can, then we got to pull him ahead again and uh, reset. So we'll get as much of this poured out as we can without him having to reset. Then we'll get it, we'll get it leveled off and screeded because what we noticed, what we noticed, this was about an hour's drive for them too. You know, with that hot water in it, a little bit of accelerator in it, what we noticed was even though we're pouring a pretty good at slump. You know, we got mid-range water reducer, so we can pour about a six-inch slump. The stuff is, we, you can just feel it. It's going to be setting up pretty quick on us. So we definitely don't want to take any time 
before we get it screeded, there's nothing worse than screeding concrete that's really hot and it's starting to get real stiff on you. You can see how long that room is. It's It was quite long. It's pretty cold out this morning too. It's probably 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It was a little bit warmer inside here, but it was still right close to that freezing mark. But the temps today was supposed to get up into the mid 40s with the sun out. So it should warm up in here pretty good. But all in all, I mean, that's that's a pretty cold day to be pouring concrete. We, we actually put it off a couple days because the two days prior to this, it was only in the 20s for a high. So it's still pretty chilly here where we are. We live in Maine. And the next two days after this was forecast to be about in the 50s. So that's going to help out this as far as curing go. You won't have to really worry about the floor freezing. Yeah, you can see how he's pushing that back out. Now we'll pull him ahead, get it to where we need it, and then he can retract that again another 10 feet. You know, and by that time he'll finish this out. He's got nine and a half on, and we put it. That's as much as he can hold legally for as far as driving over the roads. And then we'll finish it off with the second truck. So I'm shooting a grade there in the center, and I'm I'm splitting the difference between the low end of the floor over there on the left and the high end over on the right and I'm making that pad in the middle that's right in the middle so it's about four inches total so like I said so I'm dropping it a couple inches from right there where Darren's magging on the right like I said I, as I'm walking in this stuff and I'm kind of magging my pad out a little bit I can tell just by feeling it, stuff's hot. We're only gonna have a few minutes really to get this screeded before it's gonna make our jobs really hard. I've had concrete so hot before that you could just barely screed it. You was almost walking on it, just the way it looks right now. Trying to get it screeded, it was so hot. And believe me, that's no fun. So, we're kind of hustling to get these edges mag floated out. Luke's, you can see Luke's tuning it in and getting it as close as he can with the rake. And then we're going to grab right onto that screed and get this stuff leveled out. Once we get it on the ground like this, you know, it's starting to cool off. The concrete is probably the, you know, with the hot water, 110 degree water in it, the concrete temps are probably around 65, 70 degrees. Which is pretty warm, but you, but when it's in the drum, you know, spinning in the drum for an hour on, on the road to the job, it's it really it really heats up inside that drum. So you want to, you know, you it's already starting to set up the process of the heat of hydration and all that starting starting to work. So you want to be able to get it down. You can see right there that stuff's not moving around too good right now. <laughs> you can tell. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, oh man, we gotta get this down. Come on, let's let's go, guys. Let's get this down as quick as we can. I don't want to be fighting it, especially when you kick screed like we do. You know, it's just trying to kick concrete that's that's super stiff is is just hot on the legs. <laughs> We actually got it a little bit low in there. Luke's having to push it up and push it up. And then uh, right there, right here, we had to stop so he could get caught up. It was getting too low. So Darren's over there on the right. He's kick screening that. I jumped out on the outside of that pad, so all I had to do was... I had to just ride on top of the pad. So I kind of got the easy end. Darren's doing most of the work. Well, I, Luke's doing a lot of work too, I guess, because he didn't get it tuned in very close. But so Darren's going to get that couple more feet mag floated out so we can get that screeded. Because if we don't, if we just leave it and that stuff sets up, then we're going to have a real hard time just getting that last couple feet down. Right. 
you know, when we got we got a vibrous screed too we use. We got a, actually got a battery powered one, we got a gas powered one. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen us use those. When the when the crete's hot and it's starting to set up like like this and it's getting stiff, it's actually a little bit easier to pull the stuff by hand. I feel like anyway. Um, I just feel like when you got a vibrous screed, it wants to kind of float over the hot concrete, and you don't really get it scored on each end the best you can. Versus when you're doing it by hand here, you have a lot more down pressure. You can push down on the screed a lot more without creating a, a dip or a hump or anything like that so we definitely you know when we use really hot concrete and it feels like it's setting up we definitely prefer use doing it by hand versus the the vibra screeds This is a pretty typical job for us. I mean, we'll pour anywhere from, you know, 600 to 1,000 to 2,000 square feet a day. Usually leave one or two guys there to finish. Then, then we'll go do something else that day, whether it's forming or pouring something else, getting other stuff ready for the rest of the week. But usually we'll try to do one to two jobs a day. Sometimes we'll get on to three. But, you know, when you got a crew of three guys, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much time in the day to do it. But what it really helps is having three really experienced guys that all know what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And nobody needs to tell anybody what to do. It just gets done. When, something's, when there's something to do, it just gets done because you know you got to do it. No one's standing around watching wondering what to do and no one's having to tell anybody or, or give bark out orders it's a pretty laid back uh it's a pretty laid back uh, system for us you know everybody gets along really good everybody enjoys working with each other it's just our, our thought process is basically the same let's get this thing in. <laughs> luke's a little out of shape we're a little out of shape this is early in the spring just coming off winter and we haven't been pouring every day <laughs> But our thought process are, are pretty much the same between the three of us. Let's get this darn thing in as fast as we can, get it down, and then we can we can have a little bit of a break before we got to get the power trials out and start finishing. So it's it's kind of like that every day. We kind of we kind of bowl 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 to get the thing poured and get it down, and then uh, you know take a little bit of a break before you get a power trial. Sometimes power trialing can be really, really easy. Sometimes it can be hard, depending on what you're doing, what the what the weather's like that day. So we definitely don't want to just take our time putting these things in. Plus, you know, for us, we, we like to get the concrete trucks in and out of there as fast as we can, get them back to the batch plant. Our bat, we got basically two different companies we can order concrete from that are pretty local. There's more, but those are the two that are closest to us and they're hurting for drivers too just like just like everybody is so we know they're short-handed and he's trying to book as many jobs as he can so we like just to get the concrete truck dumped out so he can get washed out get back to the plant and get ordered for somebody else that way because we like our concrete first thing in the morning every single day we like the first loads out of the plant and usually the batch man will just put us down for at least two trucks a day no matter what even if he hasn't heard from us he'll put us down because he knows we're going to pour something it's just a matter of us giving him a call and letting him know what we're doing so he'll put us down each week every single day he'll put us down for at least two trucks and then if we need to if we need to change if from that if we need three trucks on a certain day or four trucks or five trucks you know i just got to make sure i give him enough notice so he can adjust because when you only got, you know, seven, eight, nine guys to drive trucks, then you really got to give your batch man plenty of notice on what you're doing if you expect to pour every single day. So that's it for that first truck. We're going to get him out of there. He's going to wash that conveyor up. That takes him a little bit longer to wash that up than just washing his chutes, obviously, so 
I'm shooting my pads in the middle again. That little X I put on there means that's right the grade we want, so don't step in it. <laughs> and then we wet screed everything, so we're making our wet pads. This time we got it a little bit high, but we definitely prefer it high versus low. We'd rather be pulling back a couple inches of mud like we're doing right now than have to stop and wait for the puddler to push concrete back up to us. And it makes it a lot easier too with your feet when you're kicking to fill in your feet. When the concrete's a little bit high like that, it kind of fills in a little bit on its own. So there's a little bit less kicking that goes with it. Now I'm out, me and Luke are out there getting that next truck backed in, getting him mixed up, getting our accelerator in him. While Darren's in here doing the bull float. And you can see he's got to go back and forth a little bit. That means that that stuff's setting up good. You know, when you got to go back and forth two or three times over the same spot to get it filled in. The stuff's setting up. We went a little over halfway with that one, which we kind of planned. We had more on the conveyor versus the second truck, so... That way we could back right in with a second one like this and just reach the rest with his chutes. We didn't have to use any of our chute extensions. Now we'll get most of this section poured out. This There was probably... Oh, I don't know, there was probably 15, 18 feet left here for, to 20 by 24 feet wide. I'm yanking up on that wire, getting that wire up to where we need it. And then uh, Luke's coming behind me doing the puddling. Darren's going to end up going back and getting the, getting the edges mag because, you know, this one's been sitting out, this truck's been sitting out there a little bit, so this one's hot too. Although we have a lot less area to cover with this one, so it's less likely it's going to set up on us too fast, but... Better to be careful and get your edges magged down. Then all we got to do is shoot the pad in the middle and we'll be ready to screed. If you guys, if you guys like these videos, you know, please smash that like button for me. That helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to my channel, if this is you know the first time you're watching me, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week. We pour all kinds of different types of flat work. We do stamp concrete. We do epoxy floors. We do a lot of repairs. So I'm I'm showing a lot of how we do that stuff on this channel. We do pour a lot of floors. We pour floors. We pour slabs. We pour pool decks, patios, walkways. Don't pour too many driveways up here in Maine. Not many people ask for a concrete driveway up here in Maine. There's a lot of de-icing salts they use on the roads up here. and Even though we use 4,000 PSI concrete with air entrainment and we, we put the penetrating sealers in, you know, concrete driveways up here just take a beating. Especially with the four seasons we have. We got really hot summers. For about three months I mean it'll get up over a hundred here and then really cold winters it's nothing to get down you know definitely below zero 10 below 20 below on some nights for you know a couple definitely a couple months sometimes three months and then you got your spring and your fall where you got really big temperature swings you know it could be it could be 20 degrees in the morning and get up to, you know, 60, 65, 70 during the day. So you can have 40 to 50 degree temperature swings in one day, which, you know, that's that takes its toll on concrete. It really does. This stuff's screeding a little bit better than that first load. It just, it held its slump a little bit longer. It didn't quite set up as quick once we got it dumped out so it made for it made a little bit easier for screeding I 
I've got my new boots on, my Hisea, H-I-S-E-A boots. Those are nice work boots. They're a little bit insulated. they got steel toes. And they're really comfortable. I got those at Hisea.com. I, I believe the, that they gave me a coupon code. For, it's just called Concrete is the coupon code. If you go there and if you buy some boots off Hisea.com, type in that coupon code. You'll save 20% on those boots. They were pretty inexpensive anyway. I think they were like 60 bucks. So they weren't really that bad as far as what they cost. I wear them to work and then I can wear them right in the concrete. And then I just, I can rinse them off and just keep wearing them. That's how comfortable they are. Well, I'm going to finish that up, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.